April 2020, three years ago I stopped drinking. Now, I never thought at the time that I would get to three years. I probably didn't think I'd get to three months. But here I am, three years later, and I thought I'd record a video sharing my thoughts, how I have felt over the last three years, and maybe a bit of perspective on who I was before I stopped drinking, the benefits I've felt over the last three years, and really how you can stop drinking. If you feel you've got a problem, if you feel that even just alcohol isn't just working for you, or that you're not an alcoholic, but you just would like to cut back, listen to this, hopefully you can resonate with some of the things I say, and I'll give you some thoughts and tips on what can potentially help you to get to where I'm at, three years alcohol free and feeling better for it. So I stopped drinking April 2020, just as COVID was right into flow. If you can remember back three years ago, it was when we couldn't go out, pubs were closed and there was no longer anywhere for me to socialize, to go out partying, boozing, drinking with friends. Or sometimes by myself, but <laughs> very often with people. I found myself drinking a lot at home. I was no longer just going out to go drinking, which is, I already to always told myself I was just a social drinker. I'll only drink when I go out. And that was changing. I was drinking more and more when I was at home. And I was waking up with bigger hangovers. I was drinking a couple of bottles of wine a night. And I just wasn't great for it. I was still able to do my job. I was still able to socialize and appear normal. So I thought, but it was affecting my mood, it was affecting my body and my health. And I just felt tired, tired of drinking, fed up with it. So I decided I'm done. And that was it. I didn't hit a rock bottom. I wasn't in a really bad place. I probably, there was points in my life where I drank more than at the point when I quit. And I think that's the lesson there. The first lesson for anyone that's thinking about potentially stopping drinking is you don't have to hit rock bottom. You don't have to become destitute on the streets alcoholic to stop drinking. You can stop at any point. Like, and similarly, you, you can continue drinking forever and be fine, potentially. But if you want to have the massive changes and effects that I felt by stopping drinking, by stopping at any point, you don't have to wait for a specific date or, or an event or for things to get bad. So I didn't wait for things to get really bad. I preempted it, I think. I could see it was going down. It was getting worse. And I was in my 30s, early 30s at the time. 34 now, so I'd have been 31 at that point. And so I've been drinking since really properly since I was like 16 which is a long old time, it's like 15 years of drinking a lot throughout university, throughout a military career, playing rugby, going out with the lads. There was never an event that I wouldn't drink at. And that was the thing I was the most scared about losing is the social aspect. I was like, oh, what am I going to be like if there's a wedding or a stag do, which is a, a bachelor party in American. Um, it's tough, you know, like I've... I've Last, the, the first stag do I went to was in October, I think, September, October last year. And it's an old friend, old army mate, and there's about 15, 20 guys that were all boozing, drinking pretty hard. We went up to Chester in the northwest of England and we was going to go to the races. And then we were going to go to, um, uh, we was doing some sort of events during the day, things like... Um, rafting and stuff like that but everyone was boozing hard and I was the only one not and uh, and some of these guys I'd never met some of them knew me well so but to some people it just wasn't an issue that I wasn't drinking but to others I could feel that it just was a bit weird they just were like all right who's the random dude that's not drinking and I'd always felt like I needed to drink to be more social and more outgoing and there is a little bit of truth in that by me drinking definitely does bring out another level of socialness and I'm fortunate I suppose that I don't have huge anxiety in a big social environment I'm, I'm okay with it so that's I suppose a bit of luck in just how I am but I'm not like the big I don't know outgoing person now in particular when I'm not drinking that times I probably was when I was drinking 
but uh, it means going to the thing like a stag do. I'm, I'm probably more of a side person now. I say that on one of the nights we went to a karaoke bar, and I love a bit of karaoke. So for me, getting up there, singing Piano Man by Billy Joel, I quite like it. It's all right. And I'm not drunk, but it's a good test of confidence. It's a good test of pushing yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone and not feeling like you need to be drunk to do something like that. So if you're worried about the social events, the big things like weddings and like I say, stag do's or, or anything else you've got coming up, a football game where you always go for a beer, just try and think like, what is it about the event that I actually really enjoy? Is it being drunk? Because that, it might be true. It might be that is the bit you just enjoy. And if it is, that's okay. But if you think actually, I like being around all these great people. If I'm at a wedding, all these old friends and new people I've never met. I like being at a football game and watching the game and not feeling like I need to queue in the bar at half time pay six, seven pounds for a pint, especially if you're in London. And, you know, like for me, going to these games, going to football games, rugby games, social events, it's all about the people. It's not about how I want to feel in a slightly altered state. And I think throughout my 20s, I probably didn't have the confidence in myself to feel oh, I, I couldn't drink. I felt like I needed to fit in and I wanted to fit in and I wanted to be good at drinking. So for me to stop was almost like removing an aspect of my character or an aspect of my personality, which people had come to know. So when I meet old friends now, I'm not the same person. I have changed and I love it. You know, like, I love the fact I've changed and I've grown. I feel I've grown. And I think it's one of the best compliments I could receive is, oh, you've changed, Adam. <laughs> I'd be like... That's great. Like, I hope you have as well. I hope we all have. And we should seek to change and grow. And I feel I've improved as a person. I'm more consistent. My moods definitely fluctuate a lot less. And I just feel I'm just more present. I'm more able to think about today as opposed to worrying about my hangover and caring about I wish I was asleep or feelings of dread of not knowing what i've said or done trying to fill in the blanks and never quite being able to do it or you know, potentially gambling too much money or doing something silly that you just regret the next day and sometimes it's just not silly sometimes it's quite serious but uh, yeah that's the problem with alcohol as well the the cost can be big for a lot of people I've got this scar, I've never really talked about this, where is it? On this side there, this scar here on my eye, which you can see if I push it in, you see that crease. I, want, I got that when I was about 22, 23, some guy threw a bottle at my head in a bar when I was in the army, I was in Germany. And it hit my head and like this bit of eye was flapping down. That was the last time I ever got into any sort of scuffle or fight when I was young. And that all happened because I saw one of my friends got grabbed by his neck. And like the drunk Adam Wood, I got involved and I... Anyway, I ended up with an injury. And it's not good. It could have been so much worse. And so many instances in my life, my 20s, where I'm like, oh, why'd you get, why'd you get involved in that? And it's usually because I'm a bit drunk. And when you're drunk, you don't make the same decisions. I was talking to a friend this weekend about drinking and I was talking about how I don't think I'll ever drink again and my reason being is I don't think I can trust myself to just have a couple of beers and be fine there's there's times and occasions I did that for sure like I wasn't always someone that would have 10 pints and that's that that was like now and again but I found that even the having two or three beers the the, the the idea that I needed two or three beers that really didn't have a huge effect on how I felt. There was no real need for it. So it's really, I don't think I can trust myself just to start again. To like, oh, I'll just have a couple of beers. I love my life now and I don't want to do anything to affect it in a negative way. And I know throughout my 20s, alcohol, on the scale of it, if I was to add up the positives and negatives, there's more negatives than good bits. So it's something I've decided to remove out of my life. 
and live a fuller life as a result. I hope you're able to resonate with some of the thoughts I had here. It's not an easy journey if you're thinking about stopping. And all I could recommend really is to get help. Don't do it alone. I did it primarily alone. And it's hard, you know, it's tough. And I think if I'd have had groups or people to talk to, it may have been easier. I do go on the subreddit Stop Drinking. If you put search for Stop Drinking Reddit, you'll find it. A lot of people sharing their thoughts and their own experiences, which is quite relatable. And there's people from all manners of different levels of alcoholism, alcohol wanting to stop ism. <laughs> like, so that's one resource. Clearly, there's groups out there such as Alcoholics Anonymous, which I've got no real experience with, but I hear good things. And anybody that's out there to set up a group to help people, I'm all down for. So try and get some help. Listening to videos like this is a good start, but basically you can start today. You don't have to wait for rock bottom. If you've got any alcohol in the house, pour it down the drain, call it a day, and that's it. Just don't drink today. Deal with tomorrow when it comes. Wake up and think, yeah, right, I'm not drinking today. And that is it. That's, that's ultimately the way to stop drinking is just to try and break it down to a day at a time. So hopefully in three years time, I'm going to be talking about how I've not drank for six years and about the benefits I've had since of that, that period of life. Or well, hopefully it's just become a non-issue in my life. I still talk about it today because it still is an important thing. It's something I still, I don't think about it every day in the same way as I did when I first stopped. But there's times where I do think about it, usually at social events. So, and anniversaries like this. So three years of not drinking. Thanks for listening to, to this and hopefully you can relate and resonate with some of the things I've said. Right, here's to tomorrow, where I'm also not gonna drink. Thanks for listening.